Hello and welcome to Southeastern 14, where we talk about Alabama's win over North Carolina late on Thursday night. The Crimson Tide heading to the Elite Eight for the first time, I think, since 2004, trying to get to the Final Four for the first time in program history. We'll talk about that. Hope everybody's having a wonderful Good Friday. Alabama fans certainly are. Before we go any further, reminder, we're brought to you by Bet Online. The tournament is here. Your bracket headquarters for this season with the best bracket contest out there. Lines, odds, info on every game, every round, right up to the national championship. That's Bet Online. You can access the world's most up-to-the-minute wagering information anytime from your desktop or mobile devices. Even track your bracket real-time all the way through the tournament. Head to Bet Online today. Get in on all the action. Remember to use promo code BELIEVE, B-L-E-A-V, for your 50% welcome bonus on your first deposit. Bet online. The game starts here. We will also get into Tennessee Creighton a little bit later. Who knows? Maybe even some, some coaching stuff uh, if the crowd wills. But first order of business. My goodness. Alabama in a game that I don't think anybody ever got separation. Certainly not in the second half. Certainly not after Armando Baycott got in foul trouble. Just... <laughs> made one more play at the end, maybe two more plays at the end, held on in what will forever be known as the Grant Nelson game. Blake Lovell, I'll let you start. Well, let's just let's go to Ernest's comment first, okay? Yeah. Just a reminder to everyone. <laughs> we all pick North Carolina. Let's just Ernest, all remember that. As Max and I always say, as Max says, he says it better than I do. There are levels to this game. <laughs> All I can say is Alabama fans should be thanking us this morning. Absolutely. Um, you should be thanking us, Ernest. That's all That's all I'm going to say. Every, all the regulars, yeah, everybody, a lot of people in here, regulars, you should know. Always strategy. Alabama, the Crimson Tide, one win away from the Final Four. The Grant Nelson game, as I like to, to dub this one. Um, I know Max probably going to pull up the stat. I'm sure you saw the one. This morning, um, I mean, let's just go ahead and read. I mean, that, that it's like unbelievable. Creepy. Where is go it? Ahead, okay, I got it up. You want me to read it off? Yeah, just go ahead and get into that. Unbelievable. Now, I knew watching the game, I knew he had a, an unbelievable game, but this stat okay, I'll read it off. Number of times these individual feats have occurred in a game in the last 25 years across the NBA, the WNBA and all of Division I men's and women's, okay? 20 or more points, 10 or more rebounds, 5 or more blocks, 10 or more free throws made, 60% from the floor, 100% from three. Only one person's done it in the last 25 years. You saw Grant Nelson wow. do it last night. Unreal. Unreal. Nuts. Um, and, and it wasn't just the what, it was the win. When yeah. he did well, yeah. what? The biggest times. Yes. Yeah. Shout out to to Royal Payne who uh, gave yeah. us a, a tip on that one. Uh, he also said Rylan Griffin compared Alabama getting past the Sweet 16 to to Brock Lesnar ending the, the Undertaker streak, which that. that's a big one um, if you're doing that. So, yeah, I mean, listen, this was the one thing we always say about Alabama. If you think about it all year long, is it's like they're they're a team you just really feel like you can never put away because of how they can score. And sure, mm -hmm. there were some teams that put them away. Um, you know, they, they didn't play well in some games and they just could not find a way, right? Like the Tennessee game, the first one. Second one, I mean, it was closer, but like if you think about the other games, uh, you know, a couple of the games against Florida. Um, even the Kentucky game, right? It's like Kentucky put up 117, but Alabama still put up 95. It's like they weren't just completely running away from it. Um, so I, I, I think that was it. As I'm watching this game, I, I'm thinking the same thing that you kind of think, when you're seeing other games um, where maybe it's like lower seeds against higher seeds, like if you don't put the lower seed away, all the pressure's on the higher seed. And we said going in, Max, I think the one thing that could be a little curious about North Carolina was they don't shoot the three that, like they're not a great shooting. It's not that they can't shoot the three well, it's that they don't really require that a lot, right? Like they don't, they don't have to depend on that because we said like the bulk of their points comes from the free throw line, right? Um, I'm trying to remember the percentages we pulled up on that, but um, mm -hmm. what was it? Yeah, so they get 21%, it's like 67% or 67th nationally, 21% of their 
points come from the free throw line. Um, 202nd nationally in three pointers, you know, get about 29.8 percent. Um, the the percentages were fine, 35.9 percent. But like this was one of those games where it's like if you look at the way these, and I know Max has a, another stat when you look at kind of the 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 numbers for R.J. Davis here. Yeah. But like North Carolina still shot 38 percent. But when you think about, you get a game where Davis goes 0 of 9, and on the flip side of that, Alabama shoots 42 percent. They go 11 of 26. Um, you know, Rylan Griffin was huge. It's just like the fact that they could not put Alabama away. That always gives mm-hmm. this team a chance when it gets into the crunch time. And then you had Grant Nelson do what he did, and that's just. That's what happens, and that's what happens in tournaments, and why you remember certain players and certain games is because of what you saw from Grant Nelson. So, yeah, those, and here's the the irony of it. Maybe, well, I don't know if it's the two biggest plays, but two of the bigger plays. Alabama is not known for defense. Grant Nelson is probably not known as, as an enforcer inside, but he had two blocks inside the final minute. I mean, the one on R.J. Davis was. In, in my opinion, the biggest play of the game. And then, look to me, I don't know if they said it, looked like to me like he missed the second free throw on purpose. I couldn't tell. And it was right there to block. I mean, who's ever blocked a heave to the other end of the floor? Um, That was some awareness right there. Yeah, I mean, it was a historic night on both sides. So, I knew that – I knew Davis had one of his – one of his – worst nights I didn't know how bad it was um this was his worst shooting night of his entire career whole entire career yeah um his previous worst night from three I think was oh of six um he had made a three in 42 straight games is one of the longest streaks in the nation um and that's now maybe he had I think he had like one or two that were like offensive rebound kind of kick out scramble scenarios that were open just based on that situation but man Estrada and Griffin were right there on a lot of it I mean that's not like an 0 for 9 where they're wide open that's like there's five seconds left on the shot clock and I got to do a step back and try to score over the outstretched arms of Estrada like that perimeter defense was just solid yeah I think that in the first half, um, you know, a couple of guys hit some threes for Carolina that don't usually do it. And then Cormac Ryan can can hit those, and he got some yeah. good looks. And there was a little spurt, I don't know, down the stretch of the first half or middle first half. I don't remember exactly when, where he was knocking some down. But it felt like from that point on, they got out and got on shooters. And when Baycott got in foul trouble – Mm-hmm. I feel like that's when Nelson started to take over, and that part of Carolina's game was just kind of gone. Yeah, I felt like I think it was I think it was Jordan Harper that tweeted it out. Um, great Alabama account gives a lot of great information, saying just the flow was we were controlling the flow, and I think that was I think that was a great observation. It just that was Alabama's game. That was not that was they didn't just beat. North Carolina doing what North Carolina wants to do. That was Alabama's game that whole second half. They played how they wanted to play. So we're doing doing SEC power rankings next week just so I can keep Alabama in the top two. Chris trying to push them out of the top two for me all year long, and I'm going to put them back in there now um, after this. But, yeah, I mean, I don't know what – I mean, what else do you say? Like, this was – Someone asked me about the Tennessee Creighton game. We'll talk about it in a few minutes. Of yeah. course, we've already done a video on it. You can check it out on the channel. Uh, but they're like, what has to happen for Tennessee to win? I'm like, well, obviously, it can't just be Dalton Connect. In these kind of games, you've got to have multiple guys. You, you've got, you need balance. That's what you need. Like You need scoring balance. You need to be able to depend on more than just a guy or two. And again, look what happened here, right? Where it's like Nelson goes for 24. He steps up in a huge spot. Rylan Griffin steps up in a huge spot going for 19. Estrada steps up in a huge spot going for 19. Sears is your fourth. Your fourth leading scorer is Mark Sears against the number one seed in yeah. advance. Like, that's the thing, right? And it's like, again, if we play that same kind of example tonight where it's like, let's say Ziegler is your leading scorer. James scores 14. Vescovy scores 12. Connect has a little bit of an off game. Maybe he scores 11. 
you know, that's you got to have that in these kind of games. And that's where I think the fact is all year long when we talked about Alabama, <laughs> you know that this is the team where anybody, I mean, really, it's, I mean, it's been those four guys, right? Like it's really been, those are the four guys that we probably said the most that have stepped up and had those kind of wow type games is Sears, Nelson, Estrada, Griffin. Not all had to have them at the same time, but they kind of did here. <laughs> and so that's just, it gets the strength of the team where it's like at this point, guys, I look at them and it, I mean, look, my opinion that much because we said the struggles down the stretch in the regular season. If you're, by the way, my internet says completely unstable. So if it's we having any see. issues, you guys let me know. <laughs> All right. Well then I'm out of here. See you later. No, no, you're, you're good now. You're good. Uh, as soon as I said it, he's gone. Well, let me, all right, Max, I'm going to ask you this. Okay. How worried were you when Pringle went out with what we later found out was a heel bruise? Because again, this is not a premier underneath defending team. The other side's got an All-American and Baycott. Um, I, I thought at that point, man, this is going to be tough. I mean, well, it's going to be tough anyway, but for, from that point on, yeah, I mean, we were. My, I, I my mind immediately goes to thing. Kelly. I was like, oh, yeah, no. Well, everybody's did. Yeah. Yeah. I'm like, oh, no. Um, but, hey, I mean, there was a lot of guys limping after that game. That was a, that was a hard-fought game. That was a hard-fought game. No one was – that was more physical, I think. I think the scoreboard kind of goes to show. Um, but I really think that as much as everyone's going to talk about Grant Nelson, and we could talk about him for probably 40 more minutes with how, how that performance just was – I was amazed with Estrada and Griffin. I'm going back to it again. I'm re-emphasizing yeah. it. The, what they did on the perimeter was was the game. That was the that was the game. They took away the North Carolina perimeter offense. And um, yes, I just I thought that was I was not expecting that. I was not expecting that. Um, the defense was what that was why I was nervous going into the tournament. I saw that one zero zero starting the adjusted defensive efficiency yeah. on Ken Palm and and I got scared away. Well, I feel like an idiot now because <laughs> they're not scared of anyone and they're just outscoring everyone. And now the perimeter defense is is looking the best it's looked all season. So there's just there's a lot of momentum now. A lot of momentum. There's some guys crying in the locker room post game. This was a huge game for them. Um, man, I mean, this means a lot, not only for this year, but just moving forward, the Alabama program, Nate Oates. I mean, I, th I, I think it was, if I don't know what reporter it was, um, I get them all mixed up, but someone was like, how about the, the Nate Oates coaching job here? Let's get some, let's get some recognition to the Nate Oates coaching job here and how much he lost last season and what he's yeah. doing with this group right here. Let's get some love for Nate Oates. And I couldn't agree more. He's, we kind of were talking about Lamont Paris all year, you know, just because of how incredible that the job he did there and kind of drowned out the the praise that we should have been having for Nate Oates. Man, he's getting it now. Well, and, and they did it without Latrell Wright's help. Um, You know, one of the, one of the top four players on the team yeah. out with the head injury, but, Every now and then in postseason basketball, something just pops up. And I'll give you an example if you stayed up for the night. Hey, hey he's back. If the internet <laughs> goes out again, let me just tell you right now. <laughs> I'm going to stay on here and just rant for half an hour. So I'm letting you guys know now. All right, continue, Chris. Well, like if you stayed up and watched Iowa State in Illinois. Yep. Illinois is not a bad free throw shooting. They couldn't hit a foul shot last night. Terrence Shannon Jr., 80-something percent foul shooter, could, could, could not hit one. first half, second half. I'm always in the camp of, like, if you can't do something consistently all, all year, that trait is going to manifest and magnify in the postseason against a team like North Carolina. But for whatever reason, Alabama got its stuff together. Like you said, they defended the perimeter. I didn't think they had, again, other than the little spurt that Cormac Ryan went on in the first half, it felt like they guarded pretty well. Again, the, the two defensive plays of the night that everybody's talking about were Grant Nelson, not a guy known for his defense. 
Um, and, and you also had mentioned um, the little spurt with who was it? Um, Rylan Griffin, first half. It, yep. it felt like you know, Carolina was up most of the first half, and it got, I think, to nine at one point. Griffin was the guy that just hit a little flurry of shots to get them back in. And, I mean, it really was an evening when – a lot of guys, as one of you guys alluded to earlier, did did very much pitch in. I mean, because because at one point you had right sell out, and then looked like you're going to be without Nick Pringle too, yeah. at a place where you're really thin, and everybody just got their. And, and by the way, Sears didn't have a great game, but Sears also didn't come off the floor. Right. Um, I, I've said it time and time again. One thing that makes him so valuable is that he's never off the floor. And that's hard to do anywhere, any position. But when you're the point guard, and when you're the point guard in an offense that goes that fast, that is really something. Well, another thing that was, I think, a big piece of this game was Alabama's pace and how North Carolina probably Mm -hmm. didn't see that pace all that much in the ACC this year. Uh, I remember distinctly, I went back and watched rewatched the highlights this morning. It's about the eight, seven-minute mark of the second half about eight minutes left, North Carolina makes a basket to go up by six, I believe, to go up 70 to 64. And then they're – so it's a made basket and they're getting back on defense. Rylan Griffin launches a three at the 25-second mark of the shot clock. They they just – one, two passes, four seconds. Rylan Griffin's open, three ball, bang. It's down to a three-point game just like that. It's like – I was just like – Whoa, I just looked away for half a second. I thought they were inbounding the ball, and Rylan Griffin already made a three. Just like that that pace uh, over the course of the whole game when North Carolina got into some foul trouble, I think that was a huge factor too. Yeah, that's all I got. Yes, I agree. <laughs> this uh, man is no. ticked. I'm just <laughs> – anyways. <laughs> but here's the deal, right? Now. Yeah, it's, it's good now. Don't jinx it. Um so North Carolina's largest lead in this game was by 10 points, like, what, six minutes into the game. Early. And it, and it, I think that also goes back to what we talked about. Like, it was just kind of the opposite. People talk about how North Carolina had started slow in some of their games and kind of made the comeback. And this one, it, they started off well. But then it's, again, where you can't pull this further than 10 points. And for Alabama, I mean, that's three shots and boom. Like, that's it. Like, that's all they need. Yeah. Uh, so I just, yeah, I mean – we're going to do a video on this Clemson game, but boy, that felt like, you know, as everybody else has kind of said, like that was sort of getting the monkey off your back, winning that kind of game. Now, if you're Alabama, it's like the rematch, the rematch, you're playing with just absolute house money here and oh, you're yeah, playing against the number right. six seed. So, I mean, you know, yeah, it's a team that's hard. I mean, this could not set up any better because Alabama is playing a six seed for starters. And also they're playing the team that now they can use the motivation of the revenge factor. Yep. And every, and, and also of course us, um, you know, yeah. because where would the tide be without us picking against them? So uh, there, there are a lot of things in play here for Alabama. And as we'll talk about in the preview, why it, it sets up very well, uh, I think for the Crimson Tide heading into the next one. So, well, I'm, I'm going to push back on that a little bit. Um, oh, I'm I had picked Cle- I'm, I picked Cle- I'll, I'm going to tell you why. Um, I had picked Clemson to beat New Mexico the in the opening round. No. Oh. And that's a game where most people were taking New Mexico. I looked at New Mexico and I said, that's a team that when it gets slowed down by somebody is not – I mean, it's almost game over. And and Clemson waxed New Mexico in that game because it made New Mexico uncomfortable. Now, look, I think that Alabama is a better team. But New Mexico was, what, the top 25 Ken Palm team? No slouch. Now, I think – I've said this. I'm going to contradict myself here. I'm They're just – and, and I'm, I'm – well, and that's what I'm saying. I'm doing this to throw out all sides. That's really hard to do against Alabama because – um, Alabama just seems almost tempo proof, but Clemson did beat them once. Um, and I, I'm going to go back and see how many possessions they had in that game if I can find it. But that's that's the one reason I'm not just rubber stamping Alabama to the final four just yet. Am I, am I going to pick Alabama to win? Probably so. But we've got a little Spoiler. history here. Chris. Yeah. Oh, again. 
Max, this man just giving away picks for free. I didn't say definitely. I said probably. I could change my mind. You might pull a switcheroo. You never know. Hmm. Um, odds are already out, though. Early release odds. Um, according to VEASAN Pro, Alabama minus three and a half. So about a, about a one and a half possession favorite. Never know. We had 70 yeah. possessions in the first matchup between the two teams. Well, the, the thing I will we'll dive into this game deeper into and like we'll probably go like 20 minutes on a preview with how far I'll dive into this game. But the main thing that I'm like scratching my head that I don't know which side to buy into is do you guys know the numbers of Clemson's opponents shooting threes in in March? They've played mm-hmm. three games. Let me just run you real quick. Okay. New Mexico went 2 of 23 for 13%. Baylor went 6 of 24 for 25%. And then Arizona went 5 of 28 for 18%. I don't know if that is – this team has an insane perimeter defense and no one can shoot on them, or, hey, the the averages are going to come back mm-hmm. to, to what it's normally going to be. And, yeah. and so I'm kind of leaning more towards <laughs> – I'm not giving away my pick, but I'm just. Well, listen, we don't have to give away our pick because we have been asked numerous times by people in the chat that we just (laughs) need to all pick them. (laughs) Like that's what everybody wants. And what's funny is like, we, we can't sneak it by the regulars, but when you get people coming in for the first time, like it's really fun to kind of see reactions because they have no idea what we have in mind here, but it's okay. Um, yeah, so we'll see. Uh, but again, we will have a preview on that game, Alabama yeah. Clemson. That'll be up today. Uh, games obviously tomorrow. Uh, by the way, Alabama, I'm, this is, um, you know, we can't wear team gear here. We don't want to show any bias towards anybody. Um, you know, I've been called Bama boy. I've been called all kinds of stuff this year. Um, you know, we've been high on Alabama for a while now, but I decided to indirectly give you props by wearing my, LA Rams sweatshirt since the game was played at crypto.com arena in LA. So <laughs> this is my way of, um, you know, kind of showing you that. Yeah. So, um, anyways, but anything else we've talked about this game for 20 minutes. Um, and then we're going to quickly just touch on Tennessee Creighton again, uh, since Chris was not on that preview, but we'll see what we, we like when we look at this matchup in another video, Alabama and Clemson and, um, boy, whoever wins Alabama Clemson, good luck in the next game against the Huskies, uh, because they, they look pretty good. So I hate that. <laughs> I hate that. Oh, like it's, it's, it's almost, it's bothering me so much because it's like, everyone's just like, yep, UConn's going to win it all again. Yep. UConn's going to win it all again. Like give me some sort of. I'm basically, I am just, I am rooting on UConn's downfall with everything I have. Can't stand it. I want more madness. Give me more madness. Well, yeah. Um, I mean, just quickly here, we, we, we love every SEC team, right? Like, we, we get called a fan of every team, every other. I mean, we were North Carolina fans okay. yesterday. So, um, hey, it's fine, though. I mean, this is this is what we do. We have fun. We got to root on the SEC because what are we going to talk about if there's no SEC teams left? We got to start talking about... All this other stuff? Are you kidding me? Um, keep all the SEC teams in. Could you? All let's SEC just, championship. Listen, I was just about to get to that. Can you imagine? <laughs> can you? We would have to. I don't know what we'd have to do. We'd have to hire multiple people just to moderate the comments if we had an oh, Alabama man. versus Tennessee national championship. Our, our prediction video. We would have to like. I don't know. We have to charge for it or something like because. That thing would just be. What would we do in that point? Like, what would we do? I would drive to the Final Four and sleep in my non-air conditioned car. <laughs> well, there you go. So, speaking of which, I forgot to turn the heat on this morning. It's a little cold in here, but Ooh. it wasn't cold for the Crimson Tide in LA. They're advancing on to play the Clemson Tigers, the rematch that we all knew months ago would be for a spot in the final four. So, Chris, you weren't on our Tennessee Creighton preview. Do you have any opening thoughts, any 
something you want to see on the matchup? Who are you picking, Chris? Yeah. I picked Connecticut. I'm in Connecticut. Um, I did oh, pick Connecticut to shot. win the whole thing before the tournament. Uh, I picked. I this is one of the few matchups that I actually had in my bracket. Both teams mm. on the right line, and I'd pick Creighton pre-tournament because I just thought that was a tough matchup for Tennessee with, with Kalkbrenner and some guys that can shoot it from outside. Um, so I'm, I'm going to stick with it. with it, but I am. But look, if you're Tennessee. This is the thing where you're like, you're watching the games and you're going, oh my goodness. You know, the, the thing that we were scared of has come back to bite us hard in in the postseason. And, and yet here they are having advanced despite that. I mean, it's, it's one of those things like they can't shoot any worse than they have. So th that makes it a little tricky because the weakness is showing up, but they have overcome it. Yeah, I we, we both picked Tennessee. Um and that's one where I also had Creighton beating Tennessee in my bracket, but I don't know. I, I just, I look at the matchup now and I, like you said, I, I think if we talk about law of averages, um, I just feel like Tennessee's going to hit some more shots. Um, good defensive team in Creighton, but I think t Tennessee's physicality, their ability to, it's fitting that we're doing a Tennessee and Alabama video basically here. Um, because I think how Tennessee defended against Alabama is how they're going to win this game against Creighton is the same kind of way. Um, you know, Creighton's a team that what? They rely on the three. That That's all they want to do is shoot threes and make threes. And I think Max brought it up that the Ziegler, you know, Ashworth matchup, I think mm -hmm. that's one where you think about the way that Ziegler defends and just, I mean, he's just like a gnat, right? You just, you cannot get rid of the guy. And I think it's like, when I see this matchup, I'm thinking, is, is Creighton going to be able to get what they want when you're starting defensively at the top with Ziegler, but you've also got all these other guys that we've said, if, if you filter them inside to Jonas Adu, how many blocks is he going to get? You know, you got other guys, obviously, Meshack and Vescovy and everybody else that, that can defend uh, on that team, James. So I just think this is a game probably if Tennessee wins it, it's, it's by their defense. Um, I think this will be... I mean, it needs to be lower scoring, I think, for Tennessee. I don't, I wouldn't love a, you know, get this thing getting in the 80s or anything. Um, but mm, let's see. So, um, how fitting would it be? How fitting would it be if the, after the first round, even the first two days, um, the, the laughing stock, the joke, the joke of the nation when it comes to college basketball media was ha ha. Ha, 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 ha. Look at the SEC. Look at how historically bad that first round was. Wow. Might have might have two out of the eight, the Elite Eight, with a chance for two out of four to half the Final Four. Man, it's, uh, the, uh, the SEC critics have gotten awfully quiet out there. I've gotten awfully quiet, and I love it. Does Baylor guard connect with – Baylor Shireman. I mean, I'm I'm presuming that's who it is. Creighton Garden. Can I, I mean Creighton? What who did I say? Yeah. Yes. Is that is that who is that is that who gets the assignment? Um, I, I'm looking on paper. They're the same size. He had, I mean, that close to having the best defensive rating on the team. I was looking to see the Big East named an all defensive team. It did not. But I'm guessing that's probably the key matchup tonight. <laughs> Chris, did you, you called him. You said to Baylor, do Baylor Shireman. I'm calling him Creighton Shireman now. Creighton right. Shireman. <laughs> I love that. Creighton Shireman. That's like a what profession in the chat? What profession would Creighton Shireman work in? Uh, <laughs> it would definitely be. I don't know what it would be. It would be an interesting airplane game. mechanic. So, um, yeah. By the by the way, Ryan, I'm just gonna just say this like. Hey, we've been talking about Alabama for 25 minutes. Like, I I mean, we, I don't know what else we're supposed to do. Like, we yeah. have in the title that this is, we're also previewing Tennessee versus Creighton. I know it says reaction, but I promise you, we, we've talked a lot about Alabama and we've already done a Tennessee Creighton video. We're going to wrap up in about five minutes. So, we're just letting people know there's a game tonight between Tennessee and Creighton. So, um, I get it, but we're just, we're an SEC basketball channel. There are two teams <laughs> left. We're going to talk about them. I mean, that's just the way it works. So, um, yeah, we'll have plenty more on Alabama. We will have the Clemson video up today. Yep. We'll all pick against Alabama. 
to guarantee the victory. <laughs> like that's what we're trying to do here. We're trying to get as many teams to the final four in the championship as we can. So we're yeah. doing our part. So we're we're trying to do our part. So we appreciate you guys watching. Um what else is there? I mean <laughs> where's <is> Sam? <laughs> <laughs> Sam, by the way hold on i found a comment from sam everybody hold on i found a comment from sam earlier he he said i he thinks he just went to cal's house there were multiple moving trucks so sam has officially got cal to usc it's official all like, over the place. He, he's all in on it so he is all in um so <laughs> look at this one. Oh, look at that there you go Crit and shire minigan dalton knox <laughs> oh boy Oh, um, that's that's something. So, shout out to Royal Pain too. Notre Dame, Alabama fan loves the show. Um, long time, been 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 following the channel for a long time. So, um, yeah. But, anyways, all right. What else we got? We're gonna wrap up in a couple minutes because we got to go do this Alabama Clemson preview video for you guys. Um, so, yeah. Anything else? Um, is must bust is it officially back or are we going to keep dissecting this video that happened on twitter yesterday <laughs> oh the one where he's on the bus well yeah chris but you don't know yeah. that video was recorded three years ago <laughs> so um <laughs> apparently there's something very interesting going on there um i've never but, i think it's it's uh i don't know how to say the whole name but it starts with curry on twitter like a big coaching circle guy yeah. and he's, he was like i have never Never had a search season like this with the with the Arkansas coaching. He's like, I've never seen anything like this before. I'm like, okay, yep, yeah, not surprised. <laughs> yeah, well, it's uh, coaching search season is always interesting. So, um, yeah, but it. <laughs> Chris, you were at the uh, you were at Byington's conference. Right? I was I was gonna go, and then my. Um... My babysitting help fell through at the last minute, so I watched from. How'd that go though? What what, was your I watched list? along on YouTube, like like the rest of the world. Um, well, I, I think they made a good hire. Yeah, you like it, our man Joey. I, I think it's a good hire. It, it, the more that I have looked into it, it's kind of grown on me. I thought at first, like, okay, that's a that's a good hire. Um, I, I think that's probably exactly what they needed. You know, I had a I had somebody who's on another power five staff uh, text me and say, he reminds me a lot of Nate Oates in the way that he goes about things. Oh, oh boy. Oh, yeah. oh boy. Oh boy. You just set this guy up for failure. Uh, I, um, I know. <laughs> hey, look, <laughs> you, you guys know how, how down I was on Jerry Stackhouse for good reason. Everybody's. Uh oh, Chris has muted himself, and now he's – he can't even talk well, about he, it. He <laughs> he's so – The world just goes haywire. Anyway, I – The microphone's turned off. Was, he's just – Oh, okay. Gosh. It's, this is just – I now, mean, now he's muted. what do we say I, here? I, he's <laughs> going to bring the energy and the work ethic <laughs> in the system that they need. Let's talk about Alabama again. You know what? Ryan's right. Let's just go back to talking about Alabama because we don't have any disaster. issues when we're talking about Alabama. Since then, everything's just falling apart. So Jerry you know Stackhouse what? just screws up everything that, that he – I apologize, talks. Ryan. You were 100% right. We, we need to go back to talking about Alabama because we got technical issues. We got all kinds of problems here. Um, so, yeah. Anyways, all right. That's all we got. This was, we'll get uh, that again, preview up ASAP. We're going to get our preview up for this one. Alabama Clemson on Saturday. Crypto.com arena. <laughs> get there. If you're an Alabama fan, get there. I already know some of them were there. Um, I'm sure Christian was there. Christian spreading his propaganda on Twitter about me and Max. Where is he? Where is he? He's probably still asleep because it's probably 630 out there on the West Coast. <laughs> um, but I got text from Jordan it's, Harper. It's his time. It's his time. Telling me Alabama's back. Hold me, Blake. That's what the text said. Uh, Alabama <laughs> fans are just, they're loving life, right? As they should. As so, they should. As yeah. they should. So, um, Tennessee Creighton, we'll see what happens. Will we have two Thanks, teams man. left standing? 
So we'll find out. But all right, Chris. Um. Yeah. I have nothing Thanks. else. Congratulations, Thanks for Alabama. <laughs> Yay. Good job, team. It's, it's almost like we haven't worked together in about a week. God, this is, yeah, this thing's been a uh, uh, a mess. So it's all right. We have I fun here. I stop thinking about the all SEC national championship. If that happens, I think I might like short, short circuit and like glitch out. <laughs> How excited I'll be. Yeah, listen, if we get, it, get, give, if we give get me Alabama Tennessee, Tennessee and Alabama to finish line. That will be just Come on. phenomenal. Remember, remember what I said. Alabama against teams in orange this year. It has been a struggle at times. Can we break that for the Crimson yes. Tide? Yes. Against Clemson, we'll find out. Hit the subscribe button. Hit the like button. Mother Carol. Hey. There we go. Yeah, she's here. Carol's always here. She's always supporting the show. So I didn't see it. We appreciate her. Um, by the way, we'll have some stuff on Substack going out. We got a big preview going up for Tennessee and Creighton, courtesy of our man Brian Edwards. So that'll be on the um on the Substack. So if you guys want to check out the Substack, let me send that to you now. And we'll have uh I don't know if Brian will get to a preview for Alabama Clemson, but we will we will let you know. So uh <laughs> Sam, my goodness! <laughs> Just, Did Sam say uh, he's going to Detroit? Are yeah. you there, Sam? Are you in Detroit? I think he's in the air, technically. Did he say he was on a flight or something, or he's, he's just he making it from the internet. Flight. He said he was getting so. better Wi-Fi than you were. Well, you could do that literally anywhere in the world. Um, <laughs> so he could be anywhere, but yeah. All right, all right. Substacks in the chat, you guys. Check that out. Throw your email in there. We'll get some written stuff for us. And uh, Alabama fans, we got the Clemson preview coming here in just a bit. Tennessee fans, we will obviously have our reaction tomorrow on that game, no matter what happens. And uh, we will see if Alabama is the last team standing or if the Vols join them in the Elite Eight. The championship. All right. Preview of Alabama Clemson coming soon. Best way to get it, hit the subscribe button, hit the like button. That helps our analytics. Happy Easter. We are Southeastern 14 presented by Bet Online. Sam. <laughs>